This is a brief tutorial on how to use the Android operating system. I've done a couple of searches and I can't seem to find anything that's just a quick and easy reference on how to use just the basics of it. So that's all this will cover. Uh, first thing to notice is that Android operating system is made by Google. Uh, that's important to know because you, there are plenty of phones on the marketplace that are using that operating system. Um, and it's important to distinguish between the Google Android operating system and the skin uh, or the overlay that the manufacturer has put over that system to make it look like their product. In this particular case the phone we're using is a HTC product it's running Google Android um, and it has the sense overlay which is what uh, is going to make it look um, with the certain fonts that it uses and kind of have an overall artistic kind of feel that matches. So your phone may vary a little bit as far as how to unlock it or what widgets and little shortcuts and things that there are on it but basically the overall usage is going to be the same. Now the first thing with a smartphone like this that you will need to get used to is that since it has a touch screen you will need to get in the habit of locking and unlocking the screen when you need to use it and when you're done with it. On this particular phone and on most phones it's on the very top and if I tap the unlock key you'll see that the screen wakes up um, and on this model with the HTC Sense there's an unlock bar uh, that's the clock that you can see there if you swipe down on that it'll unlock the phone uh, this is the first time I've turned this phone on so we will need to skip through some tutorial things very quickly here so we can get to the main screen but under most circumstances what you'll get to is the home screen whenever you do that um, with all Android products, there are some keys on the phone that are not part of the LCD display. Uh, they are touch sensitive keys, but they're not on the screen itself. They're usually across the bottom. Um, the menu keys and the home keys may look slightly different from one manufacturer to the other, but they still say, serve the same purpose and they're still in the same locations on the phone. Um, on this particular model, there's a little house that takes you back to the main screen, which is, happens to be the screen you're looking at now. Uh, you've also got a menu key, a back key, and also a search key. Uh, the house key will take you back to this main screen regardless of what screen you're on in the phone. The menu key will open up the menus for the particular thing that you're looking at. So if I have an application open on my phone and I can't find what I need to change on it, if I hit menu, um, it'll give me the options um, to, to further refine what it does. In this case, since I'm on the main screen, if I hit menu, it opens up a window uh, that pertains to the overall settings of the phone since I'm not in any particular application. So this would be my ringtone, uh, screen color, um, how long the screen turns on, just general things about the handset itself. Um, Android also is set up with uh, multiple screens that you can customize and organize in any way that you see fit. Um, on this particular phone there are seven different home screens um, and you can scroll from one screen to the next um, and as you can see it comes preloaded with some shortcuts to things that are on the phone but I can change those anytime I want to and organize them any way that I feel. Uh, if I hit the home key it'll take me back to the main screen and that's what you'll find with most of the handsets. Uh, as far as organizing things are concerned, what we're looking at here is shortcuts that came on the phone from the factory. Um, I can choose to move those shortcuts around by pressing on the shortcut and holding down for a second and then the screen will change and tell me where else I can drag something or move it to. You can also notice that in the very bottom of the screen, if you look down here, when I press and hold that, it turns to a remove option, in which case I can drag it down there and it'll take it off the screen. Keep in mind that when I remove something from these screens like this, I'm not actually uninstalling it. They're still on the phone. I've just removed the shortcut for the phone. Now, as far as the applications for the phone are concerned, uh, there generally will be a uh, applications arrow in the bottom corner of the screen where you'll find everything that's on your phone. Typically, they're listed alphabetically. Uh, they may scroll to the left or to the right or up and down. In this case, they scroll up and down. If I find something that I want, I can simply click on it and it will open up. Um, if I wish to make a shortcut to it, if I go back to those programs, find what I want and press and hold it, then it will take me back to the screen I was previously at and I can put the shortcut wherever I want it. So it's all laid out. 
very much the same way. Once you get your head around the basics of it, you'll see that everything else kind of falls into place. Another important thing about the Android operating system that seems to escape a lot of people is the top status bar, which is up here. Uh, on the left side of the screen, you'll see that there are icons that may or may not be there. It just depends on what's waiting for you. And then on the right side of the screen, you've got your typical time, date, signal strength, and battery life. Um, the most important thing here is actually on the left. As notifications come in, say you have a voicemail or a text message or an email waiting for you, maybe a missed call, um, icons will populate up here to show you that you have an alert that needs your attention. The way that you check those alerts is very simple. Uh, you just simply tap on the top bar and pull down and all of your alerts will be listed. If I had multiple ones here, it would show me multiple lines here. Um, I can select whichever one I want to go to. In this case, I've got an error saying that I need to set the time on the phone. When I click on it, it will take me straight into the application that needs my assistance. You'll see now that since I've checked that, it has gone away. Um, I can also swipe down to see if there's anything there. Um, or if there's something there that I looked at but I didn't necessarily want to mess with it at that time, if I just swipe back up, it will remain up there for me to check at a later date. So that's the overall use of the Android operating system. Um, we've learned shortcuts, we've learned menu layouts, we've learned about the status bar. Um, one important thing that's specific to Android that's a really neat thing is the difference between an application and a widget. A widget is the same idea where it gives you a shortcut to a screen. Say, for example, the clock on this phone is a widget. If I tap on the clock, it'll take me into the clock program where I can change my alarms or stopwatch or any of the time-related things on the phone. But what makes the, stop, what makes the clock icon different from, say, any of these shortcuts down here is that it's a widget. And what widgets do is that they update themselves live on the screen. So you don't have to actually open the program to see what's going on with the program at that time. It'll actually change right there on the screen for you. So my clock is always updated. Um, if I was in a uh, signal strength area, I would also be able to see GPS um, that gives me my uh, weather in the area on this particular phone. Um, and that'll all populate in the clock widget. There are calculators, there are calendars, there are any number of news and weather and, and uh, email widgets available where you can glance at what your current email is, or your current appointments are, just by looking at the widget on the screen instead of having to actually go into the, the calendar program, for example, on its own. I'll give you more information about those things later, but that was just my brief tutorial. I hope this has helped you out, and come back by and we'll see if we can find some more things for you.